I'm Diana Monsford, the world's first transgender television journalist, evidence on YouTube. Born male, became female. I always have to say that because they say, well, what direction are you going in because of the hair? You know? But anyway, my guest is the wonderful Therese. She is an energy healer, a tarot card psychic reader. She is brilliant. You will love her. Therese is from Scotland. She has lived in New York now for many, many years, and she is going to do a reading for us. I don't know about what, but probably about the future of something, something that will apply to all of us and that we'll be happy to know about. Uh, and Therese came very highly recommended by another wonderful friend of ours, Ms. Sylvia Chapel, whom you've seen on this show many times. You know, she does tower readings, she does the Akashic Record readings, she does wonderful things. And Sylvia spoke so highly of Therese, I had to have Therese on. And Therese only uses her one name, like Cher, like Prince, Therese. <laughs> so anyway, so tell us about yourself. Uh, of course, you've just said I'm Scottish. Um, I came to New York about 30 years ago. I've been, I'd recently retired from the delivery room, St. Vincent's Hospital. Mm -hmm. I was a delivery room nurse there. I've done midwifery in London, um, and I've been a nurse for over 40 years. Good heavens. And um, I loved it. Mm -hmm. It was my passion. Mm -hmm. But now I have a new passion. When I stopped nursing, I now follow a more spiritual path, although I was always on a spiritual path. I do tarot readings. Um, I work at the Edgar Casey Center, and I do energy healing as well. Wonderful. Let's check the time to know when exactly we. Okay, now are you count, 27 minutes from, or 26 minutes from then? We we stop. We have okay. to check the time. Mm -hmm. So um, now, uh, what is it about tarot cards? that makes them able to predict the future? I just feel that the, that the archetype of a person comes through and it just it's almost like the person in front of you, they get a better picture, they, they feel that, that, that you can see mm -hmm. the character of the cards. I mean, I don't read the tarot cards the same way other people do. I read it my way and that's the way we should always do things, our own way. And it just it's You're just preaching oh, to the choir on that one. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, it's just like everything everything we do seems to just be centered around those cards with such guidance from above as there should be nothing bad ever told to mm -hmm. anyone, I believe. And like I say, when, when someone comes to your table, I want them to leave happier than when they arrived. Yes. I want to give them inspiration and I want to plant a seed um, to 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 help them on their path. Mm -hmm. empower them empower them so the tarot for me just gives you all that picture mm -hmm. um, and it just tells someone tells me how to tell them they already know the answers I'm just opening the door I'm just pointing it out to them mm -hmm. yeah. now um, when people come to you I'm sure people who haven't had any tarot readings might think oh it's mumbo jumbo you're dressed as a gypsy with mm -hmm. you know spiritual music or spooky music playing yeah. it's not like that it is, is it? not like that at all after the first few i think after reading the first or second card then you can actually physically see the person start to relax mm -hmm. i always tell them there's nothing bad in the cards and i always give an introduction from spirit from the angels to know that they're safe and that helps them relax too and then they soon realize that it's it's just it's love it's kindness towards mm -hmm. the person um, and a lot of times women in particular but men also they don't take care of themselves well enough mm -hmm. so this I like to just inspire them to take better care of themselves have more love for themselves and that's what tarot is for me well you know so many times in films we see no, no, I, I can't go on, you know, that's and the right. person, what, 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 yeah, you know, and that's not the way that it is, is at so all. That is so wrong. Yes, I mean, so, I mean, I don't want to judge other people and how they do things, but that is not, for me, it's all about empowering people. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing we can do for each other, I think. Unconditional I love I and empowering, and, and mm -hmm. that's, that's what it's all about for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, when did you start doing this? I actually used to read Native American Indian cards in mm -hmm. the delivery room at St. Vincent's Hospital. Um, but then a couple of years ago, I started taking an interest in tarot. Mm -hmm. 
and then that's when it grew from there and I realized it was all there for me I, I, get, I got such a passion for it I well what it. you were meant to have obviously. absolutely it's my path yes my nursing career was my path and this is this yes. is my path as yes. well I've been yeah. told this is mine oh I yeah I'm sure so yeah. now uh, what's the difference between Native American uh, divining cards for want of a better term and mm -hmm. tarot cards there really for me there was no real difference you know, I was someone in front of me, uh, they had their problems or their questions. And the cards for me, I read the pictures, mm -hmm. the symbols, the colors, the numbers. So it's all very much the same kind of thing to mm -hmm. inspire people. A Native American Indian may tell someone to go into the sweat lodge to cleanse. I have a card here that tells it's time to have a cleansing as well, mm -hmm. the, the time to meditate. So they're very similar for me uh, to, to just guide someone on their, on their journey. Mm -hmm. huh? uh, do people react well when they're given a reading? I mean, do you ever hear people say, oh, I wanted to hear that I'm going to win the lottery and that I'm going to do this and that. Well, I usually tell them in the beginning that I'm not going to be telling them about lottery or meeting a tall, dark, handsome stranger mm -hmm. because that's not what my readings are about. My readings are about opening them up. Sometimes people just need an outsider to guide them, mm -hmm. you know, make them feel special. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people don't feel respected in their own homes. They feel... You know, well, sure, there's with kids saying, I hate you, I hope you die, you, you know. Exactly, and, you know, yes. and then this is just asking, I'm just asking them to, to feel good about themselves. And, and our society them. specializes in making people feel uncomfortable with themselves because that is how they sell their products. Absolutely. You're not good enough because you don't use our shampoo, our right. toothpaste, our deodorant, right. whatever. Uh -huh. So there's something wrong with you, but if you buy our stuff, you'll be happy and popular and your right. life will be wonderful. Absolutely. And, and we're all taught that. Mm -hmm. And and body image. Uh, well, who gets it right? Everything. Everyone is yeah. fat. Yeah. Because we're not 16 year old, six foot tall, 100 pound supermodels from Pinsk. <laughs> we're all wrong, you know? Right. I mean, nobody gets it, we're all fat. Everyone is fat. Right. Because the dieting industry wouldn't have it any other way. Right, so, so a lot of it's to do with self esteem. And, uh, and Which, as I've said, our society specializes in tearing away so that they can then use our... F in copywriting, there's something called fear copy. You know, uh, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. <laughs> uh, they laughed when I sat down at the piano, but when I started to play. You know, I mean, you're not good enough unless you buy our stuff. That's right. what they tell us all. Absolutely. And people are just brainwashed with that, but just take them... Just make them the focus of your attention. Mm -hmm. Just for that 15, 20 minutes, tell them to care about themselves more. That's the most important thing. And the cards will guide you as to where, what direction well, you should be Well, as you know from your career as a nurse, many people do not get 15 or 20 minutes of focused attention ever. Just mm -hmm. the attention is therapeutic. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. There's no doubt about that. Um, and as I was a delivery room nurse, the that wasn't exactly, it was a joyous time, but it was also a time when people need to be nurtured and, and feel safe, and that's well, what sure. we need to in our lifetime as well. Few women yeah. today die in childbirth in the U.S. or the right. U.K. or any right. industrialized nation, but mm -hmm. there's always that lurking fear in the back of the mind, what yeah, if? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, um, so basically you're doing the same thing you were doing as a delivery room nurse, but with cards, in other words, you're nurturing and you're mm -hmm. uh, helping to bring a new self into the world, people's sense of self, people's innate sense of self, which are just bringing through the birth canal of Absolutely. this world. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was actually thinking about calling it rebirthing, but I thought, you know. Oh, they'll think that's like some 1970 era primal screaming right, or exactly. something. Exactly. Yeah. But it is basically just, just um, opening a door and let someone. Everybody knows really inside what they should be doing. Yeah, but often you know? it's not practical. It's not practical, but sometimes when you just guide them like, oh, that's... Mm -hmm. that's but sometimes many people have to have jobs they don't like just to have absolutely, jobs. Absolutely, to know? survive, absolutely, yeah. Yes. yeah. So it's just about teaching people unconditional love, self-respect, standing up for yourself. And whatever your job, mm -hmm. you can find a way to finesse it in your mind so that you can make it much more pleasant, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. 
not to make it work, to make it pleasure yeah. more than anything. One way or another, you can mm -hmm. find a way to do whatever job in a mm -hmm. positive way, you know. Mm -hmm. So, do you feel like giving us a reading? If you like, what which subject would you like? I don't know. On? What do you think? Something of general interest, so it applies to all of us. Well, I think it, well, those are my poems I was telling you about. Yes, which um, are uh, Therese channels poems from her spirit guide. Whose name is Ruth. And Ruth mm -hmm. tells the truth. <laughs> Ruth tells the truth. She does indeed. Yeah. Well, what do we just do a general, just a little um, general reading? On the state of, of the world. On or the state something. of... Yes. of the world. We're all seen right. all over the world, so, you know. Absolutely. Would you like to just cut these into three, just to oh, put your three. energy okay. in them? And then you can put them back in any order. Okay. Well, I like this. This card is pretty, so I'm going to put that yeah. one on top. Okay. And this is when I say we call, we're here together for our higher good, for you higher good. We're calling your angels, your saints, your spirit guides, whoever you turn to for guidance and protection, mm -hmm. and ask them to be present during this reading. Okay, so usually we'll look at this card to begin with, which is the Page of Pentacles, which is a nice, healthy card to start off oh, with. Oh, wonderful. And I'll come back to that one at the end. So this was the one you chose. So the first card here can sometimes be, as we're talking about the world, the world is going through a little bit of heartache right now. But as you can see, this the rose in the center of it, that things will improve. Mm -hmm. As you can see, that the clouds are hovering, but things will eventually. But there's still some heartache all over the world right now. Um, will there always be? There will always, there will always be heartache. Mm -hmm. But it's just to say that with each heartache, it, there is an elevation um, mm -hmm. in time that things will improve. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of work to be done throughout throughout all of the world right now gathering up all our energies together. Mm -hmm. It's very much a time for people to be together, like this card here. Um, and we're actually... Um, and what is that time called? This is the Seven of Pentacles, and it's mm -hmm. a time when all of your energy, your good health, your finances, it's a time for, and it's also a break, just to, for everyone just to stay silent for a little while, mm -hmm. to figure out what their future is, to gather their, their experiences, their mm -hmm. caring for each other all together, um, to come off the rush. Everybody's in such a rush, and that's not so good. The Queen of Wands is here, and the Queen of Wands, she is like, it can either be male or female. For me, kings and queens can be male or female. Me too. Yeah? So, <laughs> yeah, you too. So, but this is saying that Actually, it seems more like a woman's strength that's mm -hmm. coming forward here, mm -hmm. with regard to the, the her mind is strong, her body strong. She's optimistic. Mm -hmm. So it would seem like a female energy is coming through more than anything throughout the world. And the well, that's wonderful because it's male energy that has put us mm -hmm. where we are today with wars and. Mm -hmm. Money grubbing and God knows what else. Right, but this is like a more intuitive world we're coming to. Mm -hmm. More intuitive, um, more grounded, more optimism, and more hope. Um, so that's what she's there for, which is, as you're saying, the change of, of the energy really does seem to be helpful. And also, but there's a time of balance, trying to balance, because we're so out of balance mm -hmm. right now, causing a lot of emotional turmoil. But it's it's really just a beginning. It's a number two. So a, a number two means that this is just a time for change. It's not a major thing, but it's, it's all, there's a lot of emotion going on, a lot of, what should I do this and should I do that? But this card for me is always represents, if you're to and fro in a relationship, I think of Pharrell Williams with his big hat and yes, he sings yes, happiness. Yes, yes. So for me, this is a, a card where people need to lay down their, their, their issues with each other and think of more happiness together, mm -hmm. more caring for each other. And this is a card of nostalgia, which means getting together thinking of our past, how we used to live together, how people accepted each other more, how they, it was like, a, it's like this is called nostalgia, as I say, but it's, it's going back to the past. Mm -hmm. It's almost like we need to go back there and bring forward all the values we had and all the love and the family and everything like mm -hmm. that. So on the whole, I think the female energy is going to change this. And that's the Six of Cups. The that's the Six of Cups, yeah. The Six of Cups is, is this one here. The card of nostalgia. nostalgia yeah. Yes. 
Um, going back to this card here, this is again, this is going back to the books. This is a page of pentacles. Mm -hmm. um, this is a time of, of um, going back to the beginning. It's almost like going back to the beginning, looking back in, in the world. What we what we did, I, I keep feeling these cards are taking me back to how things used to be because we're heading in a very fast direction mm -hmm. and we all need to learn to slow down and be more loving, caring towards each other. Um, this is a, this is also uh, the page brings forward um, a message and the message is more focus, more study, more grounding. Um, and the focus is on money and good health. So I would say this card is like people should focus more on their health, their relationships, mm -hmm. finances. Um, and I think ultimately it will come about, but it's just like it's all going through a lot of changes right now. But I think everybody will eventually understand that caring for each other is more important than all, ever, God, all the other yes. things, you God. know. But I think this female energy may change the, the, because it's an intuitive energy mm -hmm. um, and I think the world is becoming more intuitive also. So there's a lot of hope there but it's it's all a question of individuals getting together as one and, and changing things. Yes, well, and you start with yourself. And that's, that's you start yes. with yourself in your own home and then your neighborhood and then it stretches out throughout the world. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, um, these are beautiful cards, by the way. Where do you get these? Where do you buy tarot cards? Well, you, you can buy them in any of the metaphysical stores. You can also mm -hmm. buy them at the Edgar Casey Center, which is where I volunteer as well. Which is so on, as we speak, on 30th Street between 7th and 8th Avenue. Yes. But they are looking for a new space. So if you have a nice space at a very reasonable rent. Yes, please call them. Yes. <laughs> yes. The Edgar Casey, the A.R.E. Association right. for Research and Enlightenment, the Edgar Casey Foundation, right. not for profit. Right. And um, so that would complete just that short reading there. For so them. that's a very positive reading. In other it's words, we are heading in a very good direction. We're heading in a, a good, it's an awakening. I think this year is a huge awakening for everybody. And it's the year of number nine. So number nine's change and letting go of things that no longer serve you and be more aware be more mm -hmm. more spiritual towards each other. I think that's an important part of it. I think we finally reached the point where we can say to skeptics and uh, scientists who say, "Oh, there's come on, mm -hmm. it's only what's here and now." We can say, "No, you're wrong. You mm -hmm. cannot measure spiritual energy with things made of matter." It, no, uh, you know. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. How are we doing with time? Do you know? Um. We've got a few more minutes. How many Five more, more minutes? Five more minutes? Yeah, I think so. Oh, God, this is going so quickly. I love this. Um, so uh, where can people, how do you know when someone is a reputable reader? How do you know that that person knows what she or he is talking about and that that person is a nurturing soul and won't do something like, no, I can't go on. However, right. if you give me $50,000, maybe I can. Well, there are people out there that, are, that do that sort of thing. I think it's important to have um, centers like the Edgar Casey Center mm -hmm. where you, we all volunteer there every month at the okay. fair. Yes. And, and, and this you, is my way of volunteering. Yeah. Right, and you get, you get to try different Modalities, modalities, disciplines, yes. And readers, and then, and obviously then by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good way to do it because there's a lot of people that just are not out there for your higher good, you know? No, although usually if they're at the Edgar Casey Foundation, they're pretty carefully vetted. Absolutely. So I, yeah. I, if you, and I'm not, I have no vested interest in the Edgar Casey Foundation. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, they're not paying her, they're not paying me. Mm -hmm. We just, like Edgar Casey. So right. if you uh, go to the Edgar Casey Foundation or another reputable foundation, but we know about the Edgar Casey Foundation, mm -hmm. chances are you will meet the right absolutely psychic therapist, for want of a better term, mm -hmm. for you. Whatever it is mm -hmm. you might need, tarot readings or energy healing or mm -hmm. whatever, you mm -hmm. know. Your medical intuition, the yes, teaching, yes, Akashic yes, yes. records, everything. Yes, yes. Um, so or it's past life regression, whatever it is you right. need. And when you're with people that are not being paid for the job, that kind of tells you that they're pretty honest people too. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, and uh, I mean, what can I say, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, that's great. So the world is moving in a better direction. Better direction. It's an awakening. It's a time for more caring for each other, for sure. It's definitely a time of caring. Mm -hmm. But it's come slow, come slowly, but um, it, it's definitely changing. Well, a rapid change would be sort of shocking and yeah, that would cause its own good. problems. Yeah, I absolutely. Think. That yeah. would not be good. But I think this year, so far, the things are changing. They're get, it's definitely getting better. But the, the aspect of happiness that people, I think a lot of people um, may consider seeing what they have and living in gratitude. Because mm -hmm. yes. a lot of people are not living in gratitude. I think, well, again, you know? our society makes us dissatisfied right. with whatever we have and tells us we're not good enough if mm -hmm. we don't have this, that, and the other thing. Right, absolutely. You know, yeah. And this, that, and the other thing mm -hmm. are usually through the roof expensive and completely useless and things you don't really need, but you're told, without this, you're not a human being. The material world, for sure, right? So, um, how are we doing on time? Um, we've got. A f I think we might have another. We s you asked me at 22, so we've got 20 minutes well, passed on that clock. 28 minutes. Actually. 20. So we've still got more then. Yes. Okay. So um, this is a 28-minute show, mm -hmm. and our clock broke down. So, and I don't wear a watch. So, <laughs> Therese has mm -hmm. kindly offered mm -hmm. to be the timekeeper, <laughs> which sounds very metaphysical and existential, like right, the timekeeper. Right. But. Um, so, uh, when, uh, all right, now, surely as a nurse you must have seen people pass over, i.e. die. Absolutely, absolutely. I've seen, I saw my grandmother die at 94. Mm -hmm. I, there really is a difference, there is a soul. You can see it. Mm -hmm. You can see when it's gone. Absolutely. Because people go from being, even if they're unconscious and in a coma, they're alive, and when the soul leaves, they're like a wax figure or a piece of meat. Something inside has left. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Absolutely. That's for sure. That's why I love my career. I, um, the places where I'm most comfortable is when someone takes the first breath and when mm -hmm. they take the last breath. Because yes, that's yes. the most special times in your life, really, yes, when you yes. think of it, you know? Yes, and death mm -hmm. is a transition like birth. It's not, you know, mm -hmm. the end. Mm -hmm. it's and there is no death. No, really. There is no death. Everybody just, it's, they're having a wonderful time up there. But don't go there until it's your time. Right. No suicide allowed. Exactly. Or you have to come back there and do, or we're worse plane than this. God help us. <laughs> right. So, I mean, you know, it's mm -hmm. just like taking off a dress and saying, you know, if you take off what you're wearing, you don't say, I'm dead now. Absolutely. You just took off one garment and you'll put on another. Right. It's like driving your rented car up to the airport, coming out the rental car and taking a flight. So that's yeah. what I feel mm -hmm. like it's like. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, what else would you like to say? Um, I would like to say why I uh, went to the Edgar Casey Centre. Sounds beginning. wonderful, sure. Um, now, as a, you know, I'm from Scotland, and my brother was 15 months older than me, and mm -hmm. he was 12 and I was 11, and he used to lie on the sofa uh, with his hands across his chest, and he used to pretend that he was Edgar Casey in a trance. Isn't that wonderful? And I would sit at his head with a piece of paper and a pen, and I was glad as taking notes. Um, so I would be sitting there waiting for him to tell me something, and then my mother, in her lovely Glasgow accent, would say to us, "Come on, dinner time to the table," and I would like, "Shh, it's Edgar Casey, and he's he's in a trance," and I'm taking notes, and she would like, "Come on, Edgar Casey, get to the table." Um, so, but the the reason I'm with Edgar Casey Centre, the first day I walked in there, and I've been with him ever since, was in honour of him because he passed away a few years ago. Your brother. Yeah, my brother. What was his name? Michelle. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason I went to Edgar Casey, and that's the reason I've learned to love it even more and the people in it. But I do honour it uh, being there for him. Yes, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Well, so and I'm sure he arranges a lot of things oh, for I'm you. I'm sure. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. In fact, call me crazy, I sort of sense him around you now, you don't do? you? Well, I, I know that he's around me a lot recently. Mm -hmm. He's definitely, I think it's because my sister's coming on vacation, so he's getting ready to see us both together. Sure. But uh, yeah, he's definitely, in a, he's in a good place now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But that's my Edgar Casey story. Well, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um. 
Therese, Michelle, you like French names in your family, don't you? My father was Polish, but he grew up in France, so in Scotland they call me Teresa, and mm -hmm. everywhere else they call me Therese. So I love so the name Therese. Yeah. You expect Marie Antoinette to like that. <laughs> Therese. <laughs> Maybe holding her head since we're doing a psychic <laughs> right. show. Right. Yeah. yeah. But how wonderful. Yeah. What a beautiful name. Thanks. What's your other sister's name? Kathleen. Oh, that's well. the Irish. That's yes. the Irish side of the family. Oh, are you part Irish too? Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> I'm Scottish, Irish, and Spanish, oh, and you're I'm Scot Scottish, you're Polish, and Irish. Irish and, and Scottish, yeah, all three. Yeah. 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 Wow. Maybe we had a past <laughs> life together. Uh, we were. I, <laughs> Sylvia Chapel says that a lot of the people I meet through the Edgar Casey uh -huh. were a karmic group. You know? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, no doubt about it. Yeah. You know? So um, anyway, so how are we doing? I had to be, keep harping on the time, but I think we must be almost finished. Ooh. Although on that clock it says twenty minutes, so is that no? That, that, to that do that's with that? that's the, the monitor, and it has There's nothing to do with it. Nothing. I think we've got a few more minutes. So okay. I think to um, now, people out there, some people will be self-conscious about getting a tarot reading and they'll say oh you know I have so many other things to worry about and there is a, a nominal charge I would imagine yes I mean I, I have my own practice in my house people come and have readings in my house and um, I also do phone readings and um, I work in restaurants and all of the places I work which is a lot of fun actually there's there's not a lot of money involved no 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 well, but I mean I used to work in nightclubs not as a psychic it's something quite different actually it was quite fleshy as it <laughs> kind of happens but I love that kind of hub mm -hmm. up and fun yeah yeah, yeah. So, um, so how can people contact you they can contact my website's been organized been reorganized right now so they Is can New Year doing it? Uh, no mm. Mm. Um, I need as much assistance as I can get. Um, so no, New Year's a friend. You know yeah. New Year? No, no, oh, no. A friend of Sylvia Chapel. A friend. Yeah. Oh, maybe I've met her. I don't yeah. remember. So um, my cell phone number um, I can give you is 347-834-5604. My home phone number is... I wouldn't no, give that one. No. Well, that's I, that's when I do my tarot readings from. For, oh well, then if line, you want yeah. to, I'll just leave it with the cell phone. Yes. And and I can give my email address. Yes, please do. Which is Angel Dreams Cards at AOL .com. The reason I said don't give your home phone is, I've been on television many years, and my phone is always with the ringer off because I answer the phone and it's a man I don't know saying, hey. Use a natural redhead. <laughs> you got red hair down there? I want to see it. Oh. I want to I wanna do things to you, lady. Oh, dear. No, uh, I don't get that. You haven't calls. had it as good as you've had it with me, babe. Oh, dear. Yeah. Me. 